if you take one thing away from this podcast, if anyone tells you there's nothing you can do about memory loss, if there's nothing you can do about Alzheimer's disease, get a second opinion. Oh, hello, my lovely listeners. Welcome for another Dr. D's podcast. Today, we have Robert Love. So much. I'm, I'm, I so appreciate you reaching out, and I'm so glad to share some information that I hope will be helpful to your listeners and ideally their families. Why this happens? Why a child who has a amazing memory and as the people start to forget a little bit. Our DNA is not being replicated perfectly every time. And so we're losing information um, as we age. Our uh, concussions, you know, uh, one should avoid concussion, which yes. is, a, uh, I mean, it's new for me also that one ha has to avoid a concussion second time. You know, that's yes. what you do. Stroke, stroke as well. have to be careful. Vascular dementia, stroke, same deal. If, if someone has a stroke, first, first priority of business, don't get a second one. How, uh, if somebody, uh, does Alzheimer play a role genetically as well? Like if and now we know that's not true because there are many different risk factors, right? Diabetes, diabetes is not all genetic. In fact, it's mostly behavioral. How do one detoxify the, you know, the nerves? And what's interesting is it's a moving target, right? This is yeah. not a station, it's, it's not staying the same. It's changing as technology changes, as pollution changes, as our food supply changes. So in India, I would say the first thing is to eat clean food. And you're completely helping and dedicated towards them. I just love that. And most welcome to Dr. D show. So hello, my lovely listeners. Welcome for another Dr. D's podcast. Today we have Robert Love. Uh, he's a neuroscientist and he also specializes in, you know, preventing Alzheimer's disease with science as your Instagram and everywhere you. your profile loudly and clearly says that. Uh, and I love the description that you are particularly dedicated towards, you know, people who are facing Alzheimer's disease, which is like a huge challenge during this era. And you're completely helping and dedicated towards them. I just love that. And most welcome to Dr. D show. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm, I so appreciate you reaching out and I'm so glad to share some information that I hope will be helpful to your listeners and ideally their families and you know your, the, the communities. Um, a lot of people don't understand that Alzheimer's is preventable. And if someone has a diagnosis, they can slow down the progression, stop the progression, and often even recover some of the memory loss. And it's really important that people just know that it's possible, that they, ha that they have hope, and the science clearly shows this. And so um, if you take one thing away from this podcast, if anyone tells you there's nothing you can do about memory loss, if there's nothing you can do about Alzheimer's disease, get a second opinion. Please, yeah. please fire, get, get rid of that medical professional. Tell, the, tell them, I don't think you're up to date on the science. Get a second opinion, get a third opinion. Find someone who is up to date on the science and committed to helping you protect your brain as you age. And then if someone already has early stage Alzheimer's to take action there to slow down and stop the progression and potentially uh, get some of your memory back. Yeah, absolutely. In fact, science has backed up now so many. Uh, we have evidences. We have so many research. You know? It's like, you know, the more you work on your neurons, the more activated it gets and the more it fires. And then you can always it's like, you know, working. It's kind of working like in your in your physical muscle, the way you work on your physical muscle. So, yeah, there are so many endless things. Uh, you know, Robert, firstly, I would like to know what about how is aging related to because of course, aging is definitely related to Alzheimer's, but why this happens? Why a child who has an amazing memory and as we grow up, we turn into adults, you know, and then a lot of time we see that, you know, as soon as you hit your early uh, 40s, you know, people start to forget a little bit and then gradually, you know, sometimes the symptoms get a little severe as well, particularly with the elderly. So how does this progress happen? What happens in a brain which... Well, this, this is a great question. And so I don't have a very specific answer for you. My best uh -huh. understanding, and Dr. David Sinclair from Harvard might, might have a different understanding. Uh, there's, there's basically two things. One is, and we'll take his perspective first, that uh, there's a loss of information as we age. Our DNA is not being replicated perfectly every time. And so we're losing information um, as we age. Our, our, mm -hmm. our, D, our DNA is, 
it, both in our mitochondria and in just our, our cells is not um, in the nucleus of our cells is not replicating perfectly. And these errors stack up over time. And these errors can create what David Sinclair refers to as aging. If you don't know him, he's a geneticist from Harvard, who's uh, very much in the anti-aging longevity space. And he discusses this, this, this is his theory. Um, and so as we age, we're just more likely to get disease period, whether it's cancer or heart disease or diabetes um, or, or, or forms of dementia. So that's one is the loss of information as we loss of genetic information as we age. And that basically creates uh, sm small problems that can put us at risk for big problems. Uh, the second mm -hmm. is um, an increase of risk factors. And you might call just the loss of information one risk factor. But yeah. uh, the, the compounding of risk factors as we age. So some of the risk factors, so there's, so Dr. Dale Bredesen, who's a medical doctor from UCLA, he wrote a great book. Mm -hmm. If someone has Alzheimer's disease or is concerned about it, I highly recommend this book. It's called The End of Alzheimer's Program by Dr. End Dale of, Bredesen. The End, end of, of Alzheimer's Program. Program, Dr. Dale Bredesen. Uh -huh. He details 40 different risk factors for Alzheimer's disease, at least 40, it's probably more. And those risk factors compound as we age. So for example, heavy metal, heavy metal exposure, exposure to lead, cadmium, uh, arsenic, mercury. The longer we're alive on planet earth, the longer our length of exposure, the longer Increases, those have accumulated yeah. in our brain and our body, uh, caused mm -hmm. inflammation, caused potential uh, damage to cells, tissues and so forth. So heavy metals exposure is a risk factor. So simply the longer you're on planet earth, the, the, the greater your risk of heavy metal uh, exposure is, generally speaking, unless you're you know a child or, or infant and you have yeah, yeah. Early, early exposure and your body doesn't know what to do with it. Yeah. Uh, other, other risk factors, traumatic brain injury, uh, car accident, uh, sport, sports, uh, people have a head injury. Traumatic brain injury is a risk factor for Alzheimer's disease. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of people, I, I had a concussion early on as a kid, I fell off my bike. Um, by the way, the earlier you have it, the better, if it's before age 25, because your brain is then <laughs> more plastic. That, yeah, and, yeah, 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 that it heals recover. properly, yeah. Um, so concussions for kids, not a huge deal, but concussion, you know, uh, over age 25, really bad. By the way, if you've had a concussion, the first priority is to not get a second one. And people mm -hmm. laugh about this. They say, oh, that's funny. It's not funny. People who have one concussion, one traumatic brain injury are significantly at greater risk for more. And so in the United States, a friend of mine is a snowboarder. And I, and I mentioned this to him and he said, yeah, I just had my third concussion snowboarding. Oh. He said, I got to stop snowboarding. I'm concerned. I'm going to get a fourth one and I'm not going to be able to work and support my family. I said, yes, yeah, yeah. that's a good concern another concussion could be very, very serious for you. Um, and so traumatic brain injury, that, that increases as we age. And then as we get older, our, um, we're more likely to fall, for example. Preventing mm -hmm. falls is a very important thing for people to do as we age. You want to, um, to do this, you wanna strengthen your hands um, because that helps prevent falls because you can catch yourself, right? You can hold on to railings and so forth. Uh, another risk factor is um, diabetes. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. Uh, you're, you're in India, correct? Yeah, that's correct. Kind of uh, un unfortunately, the fast food companies in the United States have moved into India and yeah. are selling <laughs> a lot of inexpensive, very unhealthy food to the people yeah. of India. Worse than that's in the absolutely United States. Great. It's worse than in the United States. Europe, yeah. France is France is actually better. The obesity rate in France is half of the United States. I don't think they allow high fructose corn syrup. They have a better standard of food. And so any fast food company that's, let's say an American owned fast food company is healthier in France than in the US, mm -hmm. which is yeah. crazy to me. You would think they would take care of the country that they're in, but they just you know make, make the cheapest food they can get away with in whatever country. By the way, this is fascinating. In Mexico, uh, a Coca-Cola is healthier than in the United States. Really? That's, that's new for me, is it? Isn't that, it's fascinating. So if you buy a Coca-Cola <laughs> in Mexico, it'll say sugar. In the United States, it'll say high fructose corn syrup. Yeah. High fructose corn syrup is um, much more dangerous than sugar. It, yeah. uh, it's much more likely to create obesity. It's less expensive, which is why they mm -hmm. use it. And it also doesn't turn off hunger signals. 
So when mm -hmm. people eat things with high fructose corn syrup, they're still hungry. Um, and so Coca-Cola is okay um, increasing their profits while increasing obesity in the United States um, oh, yeah. because they're allowed to. And Mexico looks out for their uh, citizens better than the U.S. does right now which is, it's, mm -hmm. it's really a shame that companies are putting profits before people. It's a, it's a terrible mistake. It's go, costing us billions and uh, potentially trillions in the healthcare system. Because if you make an extra two cents on a can of Coke, but you increase diabetes, what does that do to the population and the cost of healthcare and the productivity exactly. and exactly. the quality of life? Um, so, uh, so diabetes, the older we get, the greater our risk of diabetes. Mm -hmm. uh, and so low quality food, um, is, is, yeah, is, is, in fact, so you I know, I mean, Robert, something. actually, it's really surprising that Mexico is selling sugar and, you know, I mean, of course, high fructose corn syrup because it, is, it does not change your, you know, so many times your insulin level, that's why you feel, and also it plays with your completely, metabolism is completely tossed, completely tossed. In fact, the other thing which is also very, very dangerous is like, you know, uh, palm, uh, palm oils, which is extensively popular, you know, in Indian food products, a lot of Indian, I'm sure, it's out there also a lot of uh, junk food, artificial foods are now, made of this. Which can you is... tell me about palm oil? My understanding is that it was healthy. It's just bad for the environment. And so I don't like it because it's bad for the environment. People burn down rainforest to grow palm oil. I think that's a terrible mistake. Uh, can you tell me about the, the health problems of palm oil? Yeah, so, you know, other than bad for environment, it is definitely very, very terribly bad for, you know, our gut health as well, because it is, it causes inflammation, you know, just very, very rich in omega-6, which we do not want okay. in our body, it's yeah. Exactly, which is terrible, which causes extreme inflammation. So now there is a little bit of awareness about, you know, cornstarch syrups, uh, corn syrup and, you know, uh, palm oil, things like that. But still, it's a very, very long way to go. Uh, so yeah, diabetes, in fact, in India also, the rate of diabetes is pretty high. I mean, very, very do, high, in fact. Do you know what the rate is? I am not sure about the current rate, but it was around, you know, uh, probably around uh, sixty-one percent kind of thing in India. It was wait there. Oh, over fifty percent. Yeah, over fifty. No, that's 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 oh my terrible. Goodness. Yes, that's extremely terrible. I don't know the latest rate, but this was, you know, as per the, you know, past research, it is just extreme high. In fact, you know, kids, uh, uh, diabetic, you know, kids diabetic cases. I mean. Insulin res becoming insulin resistance is very very. <laughs> it's it's like a it's a, like a cakewalk I'll say. I <laughs> think people easily get insulin resistance. It's, maybe it's because of the lifestyle. Maybe because of whatever pattern. Uh, uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, speaking about uh, the horrible. neurons. Yeah, I mean, yeah, right. and coming back so to your topic, Robert. For, for your for your country, I really hope. I think this needs to be a government issue because business isn't going to change unless government makes it. I really hope exactly. Your government starts protecting your people because 60% exactly. diabetes, that's not it sustainable. Just, just too much. In fact, you know, although I won't say many people do recover from diabetes, you know, once they get to know and they start working on that, there are a lot of other things, there are a lot of treatments, things like that. But then why do we want to go there? Why do we want to have that kind of lifestyle? Because it's not very easy for always, for all the time to, you know, get back to your uh, previous health. So I think it's better to avoid. So yeah, Absol I mean, it's absolutely. a huge... It, prevention is way easier Way, a lot cheaper, a lot less expensive, and it has the benefit. There's a great phrase from Dr. Mark Hyman, um, and I don't know what the translation is um, in this, but I'm sure you can translate this, and it'll, it'll, hopefully it'll be successful. Um, mm -hmm. uh, what, what, what is the most common language in India? It's Hindi and English. Yeah. Hindi. Um, so, and so English in, also, so it's just equal. So there's a great phrase by Dr. Mark Hyman, who's a functional medicine doctor in the U.S. Yeah, he says, yeah, yeah. either pay the farmer now or pay the doctor later. <laughs> so <laughs> you can invest in your food and your health now, and you'll be healthy, and you'll have a good life. Or you can pay the doctor later, and it'll be more expensive. And if you don't buy good food now, you're much more likely to be obese and diabetic, um, and be sick during that time. Yeah. So you're going to pay yeah. either way. Either you're paying the farmer or you're paying the doctor. One's a lot Absolutely. cheaper. Absolutely. It's, it's, it it's a very it well better. explained. It's very well explained. And I love the words, you know, either pay the doctor, either pay the farmer.
ramen now or you have to pay the doctor later in fact you know india is so abundant with food all the time it's just, just to get the right food food you know one needs to put a little effort extra effort okay so you know coming back to your topic you spoke that how concussions you know uh, one should avoid concussion which yes. is a uh, uh, i mean it's new for me also that one has to avoid a concussion second time you know that's yes. what you do that Str- stroke Absolutely as have well. to be careful vascular dementia stroke same deal if if someone has a stroke first first priority of business don't get a second one you got to yeah. improve your heart health you got to change change the diet reduce the stress whatever the primary cause of the stroke was you have to reduce the risk because two strokes is much much worse than one of course of course yeah 100% so uh, you spoke about that how concussions uh, you know one need to avoid how one you know diabetes uh, can cause uh, uh, you know alzheimers in future i mean it can be one of the reasons how uh, and the yes. uh, first point uh, you spoke about that how you know i mean also of course about, about avoiding certain kind of food types uh, etc so uh, my question here is that how uh, if somebody but does alzheimer play a role genetically as well like if you know yes. if the parents and how can one avoid it because it has so, been seen that you know alzheimer's it's a kind of a you know hereditary it just goes I mean, it's very common genetically yes so how can it's one a, avoid it's it? a very good question when my grandfather got alzheimer's disease this was in the 1980s mm-hmm. the thought was it was all genetic um and now we know that's not true because there are many different risk factors, right? Diabetes, diabetes is not all genetic. In fact, it's mostly behavioral. Yeah. Um, a traumatic brain injury, head injury, that's almost entirely behavioral. Maybe if someone has poor eyesight or poor balance, they're more likely to get a traumatic brain injury from genetics, but basically that's a behavioral issue. Um, and so it's, mo- it, I like to say, just for simplicity's sake, it's, it may not break down exactly like this, but essentially, most Alzheimer's disease is tw- about 20% genetic, 80% behavioral, which means everyone listening to this, you are in control of 80% of your risk of Alzheimer's disease. Uh-huh. Um, and so that's the biggest, that's the biggest chunk. That's the biggest slice of the pie. Alzheimer genetics is a small piece. It does matter. Um, we can't, we can't change that. It's good to know your genetic risk, but, or, and it's much more valuable to, begin to live a healthy lifestyle now to reduce the risk in the future. So there's a great study called the Framingham study in the United States. It's from Framingham, Massachusetts. It's a longitudinal study over decades and they'll follow people for decades and they'll measure their, um, I don't know how often it is, let's say every 10 years, they'll do a blood draw and measure their, uh, and you know, see, see, are they overweight? Are they obese? How sick they are? They'll measure their blood. How, how healthy are they? What they found was that people's inflammation levels, so let's say your inflammation levels at age 40 predict your risk of Alzheimer's at age 70. Mm-hmm. So, so inflammation is predictive 30 years in the future, which means mm-hmm. however old you are, you want to reduce inflammation today. Maybe you want to sleep on it and start tomorrow, but you want to start today or tomorrow to reduce inflammation because it is strongly associated with, with an increased risk in Alzheimer's disease. Um, mm-hmm. So, so genetics do play a part, lifestyle, uh, and the choices that, that, that you have listening to this, those choices that you make about what you eat, your sleep, your stress. I would also say, oh, um, so I learned this from Andrew Huberman, who's a great neuroscientist at Stanford. There's four yeah. big levers um, that we can pull for our health. Uh, number one is diet. Anything you do to improve your diet improves every aspect of your health. Number two is exercise getting Mm -hmm. regular exercise, getting healthy exercise improves every aspect of your health. Number three, this is my favorite sleep, everything Mm -hmm. and improving your sleep improves every aspect of your health. Sleep is good for every cell of your body. Most people in the generationally in the United States, we get one hour less sleep than we did a generation ago. That's a problem. Um, Is that related to obesity? Probably. Um, And then number four is relationships. Your relationships affect your health both your romantic partnerships, your, um, the, your relationship with your family, your coworkers, your community, these are very, very important for your health. If, if, you know, if you're fighting with your spouse, that can create stress, that can impair sleep. Um, and so it's important to focus on what really matters, which is your health, in my, in my opinion, 
And I think this, this, is, this matters today. This has mattered in the past. This will matter in the future, regardless of what happens with technology and artificial intelligence and whatever happens in the future, your health and your relationships are going to matter. And so yeah. those, those are important things to work on now. Work on your health, work on your relationships. And those, that not only will that be a happier, healthier life, but that mm -hmm. significantly reduces the risk of Alzheimer's disease. Yeah, in fact, you know, a lot of studies in blue zones also say the same thing. Like if you want to, I mean, the longevity study also says these pointers are really, really important and how diet, sleep, exercise and relationship with your partner, with your friends, you know, which also is very important because a lot of time we live, okay, we are not a social person. We just, well, we are a quiet person, but I think some kind of um, comforting, uh, you know, friendships and relationships are very important. Uh, you know, Robert, you also spoke about that, um, you know, inflammations, you spoke uh, highly about that. I also spoke about that heavy metals, how they damage uh, the, you know, the, the neurons and et cetera. So of course, heavy metal, metals, definitely it creates a huge inflammation in our body as well. It does so many uh, weird things, you know, we, we completely want to avoid it. There are so many, you know, process of detoxifying yourself. How do one detoxify the, you know, the nerves, like, if they want to, if you want to avoid heavy metals, because of course, if you have a long life, you are going to be exposed yes. more with heavy metals. Exactly. Uh, this is a great question, and and what's interesting is it's a moving target, right? This is yeah. not a station. It's it's not staying the same. It's changing as technology changes, as pollution changes, as our food supply changes. So in India, I would say the first thing is to eat clean food. If you want to avoid mm -hmm. heavy metals, same thing, most places around the country, but it's often our food supply is a great risk. Uh, then depending upon the level of in industrialization, uh, air quality. Um, and so air quality is air pollution is a, is a big source of heavy metals yeah. uh, depending upon where you are. And so having a mm -hmm. filter in your home, I, I live in a place where there's a fair amount of construction in my neighborhood. I'm ordering what's called a HEPA filter. It's an air yeah. filter because there's particles, there's or what's called particulate in the air, and that can mm -hmm. have heavy metals. Um, Dr. Dale Bredesen shared that, uh, so the 9-11 terrorist attacks in the United States, um, the, the firemen, the policemen, uh, the, the rescue workers who went there to try to save people, they, they were breathing a lot of particulate from the buildings. Mm -hmm. They have, no. they had, they had heavy metal exposure from that, um, amongst other things, exposure to carcinogens, and then uh, they have an increased risk of dementia. And mm -hmm. so, so, and that was, you know, exposure for a day, two days, a week, but a severe exposure. Um, and so the first thing is to limit your exposure, whatever that is. If you eat a lot of seafood, um, it's a really good idea yeah. to take um, chlorella tablets. Do you know, is chlorella, is that something that, that you have available? Yes, we, we do have chlorella. Like we do yeah, have, so, it's a very rich source of so, chlorophyll and protein and things like that, yeah. When you eat fish um, or seafood, eat, eat some chlorella either before or with the meal, uh, this will help bind to mercury. And so yeah. that way uh, you, you don't absorb it in your body and you, can, and you can just poop it out. You can just excrete it out and it won't be incorporated into your body. So that's really helpful. I, I really like this tip because, you know, uh, yeah, I mean, having seafood, food, which has got so many benefits, but, you know, yes. you worry about the mercury thing. So that's a great tip. Um, and then uh, smoking. Smoking is a big source of cadmium. Um, yeah. Interesting paints. If you know the painter Monet, uh, Monet's yellow had cadmium in it. Um, but right now the exposure is, is mostly through cigarette smoke. And so it's a good idea to give up smoking. Um, interesting side note, there are two diseases that I'm aware of that smoking helps protect against. Um, one of them is Parkinson's disease. People who smoke cigarettes have a 30% decreased risk of Parkinson's disease because it uh, increases dopamine activity or dopaminergic activity. The second one, there's a type of stomach cancer that smoking actually helps. Now, oh, really? I'm not... Yes. Um, yeah. I'm not recommending you smoke. If you smoke, please quit. Uh, <laughs> if you're concerned about Parkinson's disease, or if you are smoking, you want to quit, it's a great idea. You can uh, do a gum patch or pill. Um, and that's a, that's a safe way to get nicotine. Nicotine is, is beneficial for the brain. Smoking is terrible for the brain. Uh, mm -hmm. Vaping is awful, is, is bad as well in the mm -hmm. United States. 
uh, government has allowed vaping companies to make um, e-cigarettes that yeah. taste like bubble gum or candy. And the high schoolers are smoking them. Middle schoolers are smoking them on the bus because you can't, you can't regulate, you, you can't, it's hard to see who's smoking because it doesn't smell. And so these kids mm -hmm. with these young brains are getting these big doses of nicotine and it's hurting their lung. Um, they're yeah. getting something called popcorn lung. Popcorn lung is from, um, I think it's called, is it glycerin? The glycerin, I, may, I might be mistaken on this, the glycerin in e-cigarettes, it was used in microwave popcorn in the United States. So you get the bag of popcorn, you put it in the microwave and you get popcorn, kind of magic. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. People who worked in those factories got this problem with their lungs. So it's called popcorn lung because oh, uh, people in these factories got it. And so they took it, at, they took this ingredient out of, mm -hmm. um, out of the popcorn, but they're, they're using it in these e-cigarettes. In the e-cigarettes. Gosh, that's yeah. terrible. In it fact, you terrible. know, uh, I mean, uh, in India also, e-cigarettes are so popular. I mean, you're right. I mean, right from middle school, uh, I mean, kids going to school and they hide it in the bag. It's just a very, very big issue. And people do not understand there's so many chemical artificial flavors that is yes. also harming. In fact, you know, off lately, I mean, uh, when I was in California, I came across to this essential oil e-cigarette i mean they were like these are herbal they are essential oil but i personally i don't know about you but i personally do not like anything you know to be put in time in my lung uh, i mean even if it is essential oil, that's that's my take because i don't believe in these things so what about you do you do you think that essential oil uh, e-cigarettes are going to do anything better to your probably i don't know the research on them and so yeah my guess is is certainly better than the standard oil yes yeah. i think that's likely healthier uh, i still think vaping is bad for nicotine um if you want oh, yeah. nicotine chew some gum suck suck on a pill or or put on a patch those are all safe ways to get nicotine or at least safer um i, th I think vaping nicotine is is very dangerous and then um, exactly we, i don't i don't have any data on essential oils and vaping pens, it, it, it <laughs> sounds safer. But in there's, fact, there's... you know, having. Go ahead. I mean, nic nicotine patch also, you know, you should be taking under a guidance. I mean, uh, that also you have to watch that how much you need. You have to take some medical assistance or a guidance, you know, from somebody.